If you've been using Kittle for any length of time, you know that there's a ton of cool features and templates. However, sometimes you just want to create a vector file. A vector file is infinitely scalable. They're very crisp and clean. And in this video, I'm going to show you five different methods that you can use inside of Kittle to create vectors. Let's jump in. Method number one is to use the elements. And so I'm going to show you how to do that right now. We'll go to the top right hand side. We'll click on new project and then I'm going to click on POD presets and I'm going to make it a red bubble design, for example, and I'll click create. This gives me my template here in the middle. You can change the color of the template simply by cl clicking on it and making it any color you like. Now to use the elements, you're going to go to the left hand side and on the left hand menu, there's an elements button. When you click on it, you're going to see a whole bunch of different elements that come up. You can scroll up, you can scroll down. And then also on the top, there are top menu items here as well. Illustrations, abstract ornaments, and so on. Most of the shapes will be vectors. And the way you can tell that these are vectors is when you click on the shape. And when you click on the object color button, you can actually change the object color very easily. There's a few different ways you can do it there. And this means it's a vector. I'm going to show you now what's not a vector. I'm going to click on the top left under illustrations. Now there are certain illustrations that are not vectors. So under illustrations here on the left hand side, when I scroll down, I'm going to see vintage flowers, for example. And when I click show all, we're going to see some stuff here that looks kind of like watercolors. And when I click on it, you can see here this flower now populates. There's no option on the right hand side to change the color because it's not a vector. However, under illustrations, there are lots of vectors. So for example, here for Halloween, that does have an object color that you can then change. So not all illustrations are vectors, but a lot of them are. Method number two is to actually use the illustrations that are not vectors. So I'm gonna show you that method right now. I'm gonna go right back into illustrations and I'm going to look for vintage flowers, for example. I'm gonna find a vintage flower here that I like. I'm gonna make it nice and big so you can see that there are some limitations to this method but with a bit of trial and error, you can figure it out. Over on the right hand side, you're gonna see an image vectorizer. And when I click on that image vectorizer, I'm going to have an option now to do one color or 16 colors or any combination therein. If I just click on one and I click on vectorize image, it's going to essentially give me a silhouette. Control Z or Control Z undoes it. And then you can then click on the image vectorizer again and you can pick however many colors you want. If I click on the maximum, which is 16, after a few seconds, it will change into a vector. Now you may notice there's some blotchiness to it. And when you click on it, you're gonna see all the object colors come up. So if you've noticed it's blotchy, you can try to vectorize it with less colors, or you can try to vectorize it with more colors. So for example, if I click on one of the primary colors here, one of the reds, and I start moving it around, you're gonna see it radically can change. And so you could try to make it very close to the other adjacent colors and make it not so stark. That's quite a stark image there and there. But if I made it very close, you can sort of outdo the blotchiness of it. You'd be changing the design, of course, but if that's what you like, there is options there to do that. Method number three is to search through the templates and find a vector design that way. Now there's a couple ways you can search. The first is on the main page where it says find your perfect design. If I type in the word skull, for example, it's going to bring me back templates that have skulls. So I could simply click on one. If I click on use this design right here, suddenly now I have an image that includes vectors. When I click on the skull, for example, we can see that I can change the color of it. And that shows that this is in fact a vector. However, not everything in this design is a vector. The Texture, for example, when I click on it, if I click release texture, and now I've got this texture, you'll notice over on the right, it's not a vector. Now I could vectorize it, but it's gonna kind of look weird. So this is something where you just wanna remove it. And then whatever's left over, you'd wanna make sure when you're clicking on it, you've got these group colors coming up and that by definition would have vector qualities to it. Another way that you can search for templates is over on the left-hand side, there's actually a search bar for templates right here. When I click on it, I can type in under different templates. There's logos, cards, shirts, thumbnails. I might go under posters, for example, and I'll search for cat. And when I do that, I'm gonna see a whole bunch of templates that come up that then I can use. So I'm gonna pick this one, for example, it's gonna ask me to replace the project and that's okay. And now when I click on the kitty cat, I can see the object color now, I can change it. And again, I'll click on every one of the elements to make sure that it's a vector file inside the design. 
Method number four is text. And this is often forgotten when we're working with images only. So over on the left hand side, I'm going to click on the text button and we can see we get back a headline. If I click add headline, it's simply going to add in a black headline. This is actually a vector. We can change the text color here on the right hand side. We've also got underneath paragraph. I'm going to click add paragraph and it's going to give me something similar, but it's just a bunch of random words. It says this is a sample paragraph. This is also a vector. I can change the text color here as well. Another option is underneath paragraphs is titles. And this is kind of like sort of a graphic. It's starting to feel very graphic-y. So here's a great example here. There's a couple of graphics inside of this grouped illustration and these are vectors. So I can change the way this looks and I can also inside this by clicking it once I click the whole thing. But if I click twice, I can isolate one of the images inside of it. The fifth option is to use the Kittle AI X1 logo generator and this is new. So in my design, I'm going to go to the left hand side and under Kittle AI, I'm going to click on it and you'll notice there's unlimited credits until December 31st, 2023. At the top, I'm going to click on logo generator. And that's this new AI X1 logo. So I'm just going to do the suggest description. There's some really cool descriptions here. I'm just going to click it a few times. A modern minimal logo for an art gallery, black and white. And then I can simply go down here to the bottom and click generate logo. So if you're not very creative or if you're struggling to figure out what to type in here, just hit the suggest description button a few times and it can give you an idea of sort of the scope of what the ask is for the computer. We can see here down at the bottom, there's four options that come back. I'm going to click on the fourth one. It's now going to replace it into a new project. And this is a vector. I can change the colors. It's a combination of font and illustration. Sometimes they're very simple. Sometimes they're very complex. I really hope you found this walkthrough helpful. I really love using Kittle. I'm a proud ambassador. I'll put a link in the video description below for the Kittle subscription if you're interested. Just a heads up, it is an affiliate link. And that just means that if you click on the link and you purchase the Kittle subscription, I would receive a small commission. I use Kittle a lot and I make a lot of sales with print on demand using Kittle. Highly, highly recommend. Here's another video on how you can supercharge your print on demand journey using the powers of Kittle.